G'day, Bomber fans. Huge game coming up this weekend. There's a massive game. Uh, another Friday night match uh, against the Up and About Crows this time at the ground where we suffered that embarrassing gather round loss. Uh, this is massive. You get the feeling a game like this could really dictate the direction of the season for both teams. There's a lot riding on it. Big preview coming up. Let's get into it. But first, some votes from the Bulldogs game. We had the same thinking. Durham, Maximum, Dersma next up and Caldwell on the podium as well. The only difference is our role player. Uh, Goldstein for me and Harry Jones for you guys making it the third straight week he is featured as the role player for one of us a quick shout out to stringer as well who was so close behind him for the tally overall merit leads one vote ahead of uh, recruit ben mckay sam durham has made his way onto the podium in third place it's a bit congested from there with perkins mcgrath and gresham on six dersma stringer caldwell and harry jones round out the top 10 Alrighty, so friday night adelaide oval coming in with some confidence deja vu it's essendon versus adelaide ninth first 14th both sides coming off huge wins over the weekend adelaide got off the mark against the undefeated blues away from home and we upset the dogs at the very same stadium this time around it's at Adelaide Oval and sure the conditions are fair but it's a stadium we probably don't want to visit again after what happened last time I'm going to be there though uh, Suntory in hand uh, but what can we expect to see from fans our opponents are one and four but are they actually favorites going into the game now well the short answer is probably yes Adelaide have struggled this year they're not the side they were last season but they have showed plenty to like um, after that Colton win I think we should expect to see a version of Adelaide closer to that now. Adelaide's highest score before round five was just 77. Uh, that was from the highest scoring team of last year. They were averaging 57 across the start of the season and then they go and score triple figures against the unbeaten Blues and it came from a big shake up to the team and that system which I will focus on uh, but it shows a more direct and risky style of play with a dynamic midfield mix full of dangerous star power. What we saw against the Blues was thrilling. They looked like a new team and it makes for a fascinating battle with our engine room which has been fantastic for all games bar the one played at Adelaide Oval. There were clear changes to Adelaide's midfield because it was very one-dimensional early in the year. You had Dawson, Crouch and Laird featuring at most centre bounces. It wasn't really working and it's all they have been relying on. Those three players were in pretty much every centre bounce until recently. Against the Blues they were in less than half on average. In fact, uh, youngsters Jake Saligo and Isaac Rankin were thrown in for unpredictability and natural impact and it worked a treat. They featured more in centre bounces against the Blues than any other midfielder at the club, including Dawson. Matt Nick noticed that the clubs were getting a read on his team's play so he moved the magnets around and I don't expect them to stop there. I think a part of what makes Adelaide so dangerous on Friday is the fact that we don't really know what to expect with their 22. They have options up their sleeve. Why else would they go chips in on Saligo and Rankin? And the issue is if they get on top it's hard to stop because there isn't really a blueprint to it yet. The Blues had more clearances and more territory but there wasn't there was a real energy about that Adelaide midfield which we haven't seen for the rest of the season. Rankin in particular was scary very good. I think that makes the matchups fascinating. They're going to be a fascinating watch because both sides have different looking engine rooms to what we've expected at the start of the year. Durham and Caldwell featured heavily in the guts against the Dogs in negating roles, but the Crows aren't really a team that warrant negating in the engine room unless Rankin is threatening to tear the game apart again. And even then, he isn't someone that you can necessarily limit the impact of because he is a small disposal high impact player. There will be a big watch on Darcy Parrish who has yet to hit his strides. He could be a real player that could break the game open through clearance alone. How will Essendon's dual ruck setup limit the amount of hitouts O'Brien gets? He currently leads the league for average hitouts per game. If Goldie and Draper struggled against Saligo at Adelaide Oval, there's every chance they get bullied by O'Brien, but also it could go the other way. If they can get on top of English, they can do the same against O'Brien. It's hard to know which version of each play we'll get. And for the first time, it's kind of exciting because we haven't seen the best of Draper or Parrish or even Merritt yet. Those players have levels they can still go to. We could potentially see them at the level they are currently at or or we could see them back at their best, and that would make the game a hard one for the Crows to win. And it's also a bit of a worry that Adelaide's forward line looked all right for once. Uh, they were so good at scoring last year, so it came as a bit of a shock to see them average under 10 goals a game to start the season, but that was better. Uh, Walker found form, uh, Rankin hit the scoreboard, midfielders chipped in, they kicked a winning score, and the, the scary thing is that there are still clearly levels they can go to from there. Fogarty is out of touch. The, en uh, the entries aren't what they need to be still. Uh, if Adelaide are properly on, they can put up a damaging score. They showed that because they weren't even that on against the Blues. So I think a big part of what will dictate the game on Friday is whether 
Adelaide are feeling switched on or not. They are typically not a very clean team, so if they were to be, it'd be hard to stop. Adelaide fans would agree, uh, but this is a team that can beat themselves sometimes. You don't always have to play well to beat this team. Sometimes they simply aren't having a good day, but when they are having a good day, uh, they can be very, very strong, as we just saw. As strong as their forward line was against the Blues, there were still clearly issues with that undermanned backline and general team defence as a whole, and it's a bit different from us. It's, it's more of a one-on-one -on -one point of view. They're still quite young and lean. Harry Mackay had six contested marks against them. Gorn had four. The Crows have averaged a little over six contested marks uh, in the last four games. Their opponents have managed an average over 12, almost double the amount. They aren't full strength. Nick Murray and Riley Thilthorpe are two big aerial options missing from the side, and Jordan Butts is now injured as well. And yes, we have been missing Peter Wright the last few weeks, and Reed and Ridley, but we do have 15 more contested marks already this season than Adelaide. We have a dual ruck setup that makes it challenging for undersized defences. This is where Draper and Goldstein can really take control of the game a bit uh, when resting forward or propped up as an outlet kick, and uh, not only ensuring that Keane and Butts can't get easy intercept marks, but also making sure they give support to Jones and Langford, who can take advantage of the height around them, possibly finding themselves on matchups against those second tier tools at the Crows, and those are the guys you can exploit. McLaney and Worrell, these are guys uh, th that smart forwards can get on top of, so let's hope the numbers around Langford and Stringer give them opportunities, and, and Jones, uh, to get the better of the second tier backs at Adelaide, because I think it's something that we could see happen. If we get on top, uh, they have always been a team that can leak a mark inside 50 or 2. Something else the Crows seem unable to do is to uh, stop the opposition defenders getting a hold of the game. Uh, set aside round 1 against Gold Coast because the conditions were horrible and it didn't suit that style of play. But every game they've played, really, they've been ripped apart by the prominent backmen. Uh, Tom Stewart took 10 intercept marks against them. Alex Pierce took 5. Against Melbourne, Lever had 5. And May and McDonald combined for 6. Kemp only had three, but you felt a presence from him. They really do struggle to bring the ball to ground, which also shows off that contested marking number I was talking about before. But I think it's a confidence thing as well. They're lacking Thilthorpe, who gives them real height. Fogarty is out of form and not having much impact. And Taylor Walker is only one player in the team. Really, this is a game that would be perfect for Ridley, but unfortunately he is injured. It doesn't mean Mackay won't have an impact, though. It's going to be tough when he's trying to pin down Walker and uh, tries intercepting game at the same time. But he's a real danger player for the Crows. He's in very good form. He had some great games for us already. He is one that, if you're playing well, can take control of the game. Realistically, Adelaide are a team that can control their own fate a bit. As I said earlier, they can play themselves in and out of games. Sometimes within a match they do this, uh, but we are also a side capable of that as well. Look at the turnaround from rounds four and five. It's drastic. As great as it is winning a game like we just did, it doesn't mean much if we go back to how we played in round four. It's so early into the season, we don't know what version of Essendon we should be expecting each week, but we have set the benchmark. We can be at a high level. It's whether or not we will be that I'm unsure of. Is it still too early to trust Essendon? It's hard to say. You wouldn't be surprised if we went out and got belted again, but uh, you also wouldn't be surprised if we would go out and have a big win against the Crows either. It's a hard game to predict, and I think we are a big reason for that. It's hard to read a team after two very different performances in the space of seven days. If we turn up, we can win. If we don't, there is every chance we get embarrassed. And I think a good way to force the Crows to be the worst versions of themselves is to apply intense pressure like we did against the Dogs. Adelaide are not a good team by foot. They are bottom six in the league for disposal efficiency, and their fans will tell you that that has been an issue for a while. And it's something Scott should really be highlighting, the fact that, as it is, they are not a great team by foot. If we apply the amount of pressure we did last week, force them to be on the back foot, they will be even worse. Uh, this makes the roles of Gresham and Stringer and Davey really important. So too, midfielders like Durham and Dersma. An easy way to have a good game on a night like this, a good individual game, is just apply a butt-ton of pressure. Look at Davey last week. He didn't set the world alight with ball in hand, but he had the most pressure acts, which uh, Brad Scott was clearly wrapped with. Team news for us, there's one forced change. Jai Menzi has a shoulder injury, and realistically, he was probably facing an axing anyway. So we should expect to probably see Hind come in from the sub role, and I'd say Santas take the vest instead. Uh, that is unless Dylan Shield is considered fit enough to return. Scott said it's a possibility and we have seen him take up a forward role recently. Uh, Caddy and Roberts probably aren't ready yet. Hayes is getting closer and closer. I doubt we change too much from a team coming off a good win though. As for Adelaide, they have two forced changes. Matt Crouch has been suspended, so we expect Sam Berry, the super sub, to be elevated to the best 22. Jordan Butts is also out. He is injured, so Boy Lace or Himmelberg could come in. Maybe Dan Curtin if they back in uh, Keane to do 
do a job. There is also the slight chance we see Lockie Gallant dropped in favour of uh, Chris Burgess, who is waiting in the sandfall. Danger players, Isaac Rankin, he's the big one right now. He's in ripping touch, hard to stop. If you stop him, you stop a lot of five power. Jake Saligo is also in ripping form in that midfield. He's put together a couple of really promising performances. I hope we've done our homework on him. And Riley O'Brien, one of the very best rucks in the comp. We need to make sure he doesn't have his usual impact. Uh, for the Bombers, if there are any Crows fans watching, Jake Stringer, obviously, he's been changing games of his own boot. Carl Langford is going to be really dangerous. Undersized Crows defense, he'll be licking his lips. And Darcy Parrish, he is due a big game. He's been floating, uh, no excuses this week. He should be fit, and he should be mature enough to get on top of their midfield. Look, realistically, games like these are the ones that can make predictions look very silly in hindsight. This is a dangerous game to be com confident going into. I'm sure many in the comments will be up and about after a good performance, uh, but I think we should be cautious. I can see a world where the Crows make us look very silly like Port. I can also see a world where we make the Crows look silly. It's really tough to know what will happen on Friday night. Two very unpredictable teams going up against each other, full of confidence. It's exciting. It's anyone's game. I just think Adelaide at home, if they are back up and about like they were in 2023, they'd have the upper hand. I think this is a chance for a real statement for both clubs. But if we are saying we are back in form after our win, we've got to say the same about the Crows. And the Crows in form at Adelaide Oval, not an easy beat. I would love to tip us, but I just think the Crows have more to be worried about heading into this game. More on the line. The fans on their side, I think they win by around 10 points. That is all. Leave your predictions down in the comments below. Let me know what you think uh are you reckon we a chance to win come say hi at the game if you see me i'll be the guy in red and black downing the suntories on the hill like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and go bombers